So in today's video, I'm going to test this Bondo polyester resin for the purposes of filling in some of the layer lines on 3D prints. I bought this to do fiberglassing. I have a lot of it left over. This bottle was $18 at Walmart, so it's super cheap. Um, this is almost an entire liter of it, and I probably will only use um, 15 milliliters for each of these pieces. But as you can see, this this piece has a lot of layer lines on it. Um, there was some bad lamination on the bottom. So I'm gonna test to see how the polyester resin works to fill in these layer lines on this uh, Mandalorian back armor as well as this helmet. So this helmet has some pretty severe stepping on the top. Um, so let's see how well this does and uh, how many coats it takes. Um, a couple things to note about this stuff is it can be pretty toxic. So I do have a window open and it's the same stuff that is in regular Bondo. It's just way thinner. So it can be thickened with Bondo or Bondo can be thinned using this same stuff. Um, I've used that process a couple times, it works really well, um, but I haven't used it to on its own on a 3D print before, so let's see how it works. Okay, so I have one ounce. The ratio on this is two drops for this amount. Make sure to mix your resin well. If it's not mixed properly, you can have curing issues that will make future paint layers impossible. So I'm going to brush it up and down across the layer lines so that it fills in there. Trying to make sure it doesn't pool up in this recessed area and fill in this little bit of Okay, so the bottom of this, there was, it was printed at a weird angle, so it didn't really laminate all that well. So I'm going to dab in some resin to really connect all of the filament that's loose. And I put down some protective plastic on my work table. Okay, so now I'm going to do the helmet, and I used the leftovers from the last batch to start on the top because, as you can see, there's some ringing and stepping um, just from the nature of printing this shape. So I figured it'll take two coats, might as well get started on the first one. And I mixed up three ounces of the resin this time instead of one like the chest or the back piece. When applying the resin, I made sure to avoid where the ear caps will go, so that I don't build up material and change the geometry. Okay, now I'm going to take a smaller chip brush to just clean up some of the detail areas, make sure 
there's not pooling around the edges, so we get crisp transitions. The resin did an excellent job filling in the low spots on the print, but it left some high spots, and it mostly eliminated the ringing from the dome of the print. This meant I had to go back and do some hand sanding. I started by wet sanding with 150 grit sandpaper, then every subsequent layer I used a finer grit of sandpaper and did additional filling until it was smooth. This process saved me a ton of time and required me to do less layers of filling and gave me an overall stronger helmet than I would have gotten by just applying filler primer. This is what the helmet looked like after its first round of sanding. This is probably some of the best one of my helmets has looked after one round of sanding, but it still requires quite a bit more work. So here's my final result. This helmet is the perfect design for a, an application like this because they're, the details are not very small, so they can easily if this middle groove is filled in with the resin, it can easily be sanded with a piece of sandpaper or a round file, and the results are amazing. It took out all the stepping in the dome with very little sanding, and the whole helmet came out super smooth with only two extra passes of filling. I'm, I plan on using this process more in the future because not only does it have great results, it also strengthens the helmet itself, so this should be much more robust than had it not been filled with resin. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.